Matt Marin here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. So glad to be back live with you here on the Dixie Bell Facebook page. I hope you're doing well. Tonight we're going to be creative, have some fun, work with Dixie Bell products. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell, so I'm always happy to share my techniques and tips and tricks and all the good things with you and always showcase featured products from Dixie Bell. Again, thank you so much for saying hi, letting us know where you're watching from. As always, if you have questions throughout the live, just put them in the comments. Tonight we're going to be working on a door project. So I have a client who wants me to work on a, a door, a couple doors for her, and she wants them to be kind of a weathered, a worn look. So I thought I'd practice tonight, see if I can pull that off. And uh, so I've got the project behind me. Let me show you the, a little bit of the process for my project. So let me walk you through my steps tonight of where I'm at right now, and then I'm gonna continue on with this project with you here in the live. So here we go. This, the first thing I did, um, and I, I kept forgetting that I'm gonna use Terra on this project, but I actually used Dixie Bell's Mud Puddle Chalk Mineral Paint for the base coat. Now the doors I'm gonna get from my client are gonna be primed white. This door was white. So I wanted to kind of simulate a raw wood because that's, that's the look that we're going for. So mud puddle is going to be my wood color. Does that make sense? So I assume I did, they weren't white, white primed. So I went ahead knowing that I was still gonna do terra, I went ahead and did mud puddle as my base. And there's the door loosely painted with mud puddle. I didn't mind having streaks and some of the white showing through totally was cool with that so nothing too fancy and then i went into using desert tan terra clay paint color and you can see i had my mixing cup there i was aiming for two ounces and i got two and a half that's okay now let me just tell you um, on the back of the instructions for dixie bell's product there it is on the right it says mix two level scoops of sea spray to eight ounces. So if you can figure out two scoops for eight ounces and just do the math to, if you want four ounces, do one scoop. So you kind of can wing it to a certain degree. And then it says using a paintbrush dab and swish your paint. So let me just show you. Uh, the next thing I did was there is me mixing in um, sea spray into that container. And I just did a little less than one scoop. If you want it thinner, do less sea spray. If you want it thicker, do more. It's almost like creating cement. And then after that, you can see I just used a little artist palette knife to mix it up and it almost looks like cement. So that worked out really well. And then <clears throat> the next picture shows me using a premium chip brush to dab on the texture onto the door. And you can see how thick I'm doing some of the texture and that worked out really well. And let's see a couple more pictures. And these are just going to be pictures of how much clumps of sea spray I left um, on the door. And there are times where I brushed and other times I didn't. Now keep in mind, I'm going to show you in just a minute, but you notice how my application of sea spray almost looks like gray cement. Well, it's going to dry lighter, but Terra always dries darker when you top coat it. So just a couple more pictures. So this is how splotchy the door looked after I did all the sea spray look. I do wanna remind you one key fact of information. I never cleaned my sea spray br br brushes or anything out in the sink. I took it outside with the hose and I sprayed off the brush and the container. So this is my picture to remind you, make sure you don't clean out your sea spray in your sink. You don't want the sea spray drying in your drain. So. Just a little tip about that. So that gets us where we are right now. And again, you can read the directions on the back after you use a paintbrush or you can scrape it on. Then it says, once tacky, gently brush down the crest and peaks, creating texture. I didn't do that. I didn't do that step when it was tacky. I actually applied the sea spray this afternoon. I put a fan on it and let it blow on it for about an hour. It's mostly dry. Um, so the next step is really, the next step of, as far as point three is up to you. If you want a brush texture, then brush it, knock it down. If you want a scrape texture, let it dry. So I'm gonna go with the idea that I'm gonna let it dry. And then I'm gonna take just a plastic 
uh, scraper and I'm gonna scrape off the high points, but you could paint on the next color, which is what the instructions talk about, and then scrape off the paint and the, tech, the high points. It really is up to you. And just let me tell you a little secret too. I actually painted the other side of the door with Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint. So I'm kind of doing a two-sided door as an experiment. And if it works out and I really like it, I actually might even hang my door on the wall. I don't know what y'all think about that. but um, So I'm expecting to see some contrasting effects here. The, the good thing about Sea Spray, it's just a great texture creator. And there's a lot of creative freedom in there on how you take the next step. Uh, um, you could brush it on, scrape it on. You can brush it off, spray it off. <clears throat> if you didn't get enough texture, put some more, you know, do another step. But I'm going to go with it. Now, some brushes that I'm tentatively going to use, we're going to see tonight. Uh, I've got the Big Daddy. Love that. I have a, some other chip brushes. I have my little uh, butcher pan that I might use for some paint. You've seen me use that for with Tara before. Um, but let me just put some stuff away real quick. Again, y'all let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer those tonight. If I miss any of your comments, I apologize. I've got my nose into my project and I'll keep moving. Um, the three colors that, in case I miss saying it, Desert Tan is the color that I used with the sea spray. And that's what's on here. I have Moonbeam because I want white. That's about as white as you're going to get. And then I have Blue Agave. Now, Blue Agave is, to me, what I would consider a vintage duck egg color. And um, it's amazing. This is the used container, and this is the not open container. So the nice thing about my used container is that I can actually take a misting bottle and spray it, and you can see more of what the color is going to look like compared to when it's dry. These colors always dry much lighter. Uh, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about with the light color and hopefully my camera stays connected while I move it around. I want to show you, you see how contrasty this is? I chose the um, color and I keep going to keep it up here. Desert tan because when it dries, do you see how dark it is? So it's not going to be as much contrast. To me, it almost looks like another level of wood grain. So I'm not going to get this light color. I'm going to get this when it's dry. So that's what I'm, I'm really banking on happening. And uh, so that's the one thing I would advise you to keep in mind when you're working with Tara is that you are getting, um, you, you have to ex know where you're going because as a, unlike chalk mineral paint, when it dries, it dries almost the same color. Here it's going to dry a little differently when you top coat it or wax it. So I, I do want to bring that up. So what I'm going to do at this point, and I may not be in the camera the whole time, but the idea that I would like to do is I'm just going to knock down the high points. I did not wait till it was tacky. So what I want to do is I want to keep the texture, but the high points I'm going to knock down. Now keep in mind, you can use a metal scraper, but since I just did my um, sea spray earlier. So I can do that. It's, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I don't want to lose all that texture. I just don't want the really high points. Yep. Right over there, not really removing a lot of the texture, just removing the high points. And if you create scrape lines, that's okay. Remember we want out our goal and I put it in the description is weathered worn. Not that that's an official description, but weathered worn means texture layers. So I mix two and a half ounces of paint with just under a scoop of sea spray. And I was able to texture liberally as much of the door as I wanted to. And I actually didn't even use it all. So it goes a long way when you're adding texture. And notice, as you notice, I did not texture every spot of this door. Let's just take a look. So you can see, um, I can feel the texture, but there's no raised texture. Here's a great spot here. 
This part is just loose paint and I'm okay with that. So I think we're good to go. Let's get our little butcher, butcher plan pan back out. I have multiple scrapers, as I said a while ago, you can apply terror with scrapers. This is the part that you just need to experiment, experiment and try it and see what you have overall. I actually think it would be a lot of fun, and since we're just making this up as we go, to try the Big Daddy because it's got a large canvas surface. I can cover the entire width of the panel with one brush stroke. The thing that I've been struggling the most with on this project is just staying, uh, I would consider my, consider patience, just not working so fast. Uh, Cause I'll, it's, there's a lot of steps and this is the kind of thing that, yeah, you can work fast, but I think it would be better for me just, to, sometimes I just have to breathe and slow down, you know? Okay, so you saw me put a little bit of desert, I'm sorry, moonbeam on my tray. I have premium chip brushes off to the side. So let's get a, two things you might have handy, a Dixie Bell's misting brush, misting bottle, wow. Um, I do have a um, squirt bottle handy if I need to move more, but I'm not going so much for a drippy look. In order to do a weathered worn, it's best for the medium to be fairly dry as opposed to drippy and wet. It's totally up to you, the look you're going for. So you can see right now that I'm just working some paint on my brush. Just a little, however you want to do it, pull it in. Um, what I'm hoping to accomplish here is, a, is more of a drag. I don't want to brush it back and forth. I want to drag it. And um, so that's what we're going to try. You can see, still see where my paint's kind of wet when I misted it a while ago. So. Again, this is the part that's kind of experimental. I don't know if it's going to be quite the look. And if I need to, what I'm going to do is we'll paint part of the door one technique and experiment because it really, this is just a, a practice before I do anything else. Now, this is a much lighter color. And what's happening, so you can see it caught the wet spot, so it got a little, and I'm just, yeah, that's not quite the look I'm going for because that's wet. How much paint you have on your brush will determine how much paint goes on the door. I probably should um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna splotch this off because I don't want it to have wet streaks. I'll fix that later on. So let's let's pull you in again. You can see all the great text uh, highlights and peak there's there's just the textures are just getting hit so what i'm counting on here is we have the darker mud puddle then we have the lighter color which will actually darken we're just going to have layers and i the ultimate finish color here is going to be blue agave so we have one more color to put so i don't want have to overdo this color much but i do want to have a decent amount. I love having the ability to do this. And when you're doing with the big daddy brush, so you see how I'm laying it flat and I'm just laying the paint down. Really hitting all that texture. If you want more paint, put more paint on your brush. Look how easy that's going on there. If you need to, um, you know, tap it, that's fine too. Looking great, coming along. I'll try and give you a good view of this panel here. I'm not putting a bunch, a ton of paint on my brush, just enough that I can get a little bit of a drag and I am having to put a little bit of brush on there but you you 
you determine it. Now in here, I might turn my brush sideways or you can drag this way like this. That's kind of cool. I think that's working well. I love having some of those highlights come through and the darks come through. Now this area kind of drug like it was a little too wet but I have another color coming, so I'm not too worried about that. And you might even go the other direction if you feel like it would help get the paint off your brush. So I think what's happening is that the brush is getting a little moisture in it from all the paint I've done. So I'm gonna try and do a little bit less paint. More texture, the less you scrape off, the more texture you're gonna get. That might be the part that you might need to experiment a little bit. If you're trying to get the perfect technique, you might do some um, cardboard or small wood panels and just practice with, okay, how long do I leave the sea spray on or how quickly do I paint? Do I paint with sea spray? There's so many ways. Now, let's pause here. Let me show you another technique that we can add to the mix. So you can actually come back in here now with a scraper and you could scrape off some of this paint. So it's in the whole, you see the goopy stuff I'm talking about earlier. This is not technically the look I'm going for, but it can be if you like the look of it. You know. I mentioned earlier, we we're experimenting tonight, so this is me just trying it out. This is gonna be less, this is gonna be less of a, uh, what do I call it? Dry brush and more of a, a scraped look. There's no wrong answer. It all comes down to what you're trying to do. And you actually, that's kind of funny. You actually could come back in with the stuff you just scraped off. Just scrape it back into the piece. That's kind of cool. Add some more texture. So again, it just comes down to, do you like that look or do you like the, the brushed look? And it could be there's a hybrid of a little bit of scraping and a little bit of paint. That's kind of cool too. Cause I like a, I like a little bit of the brush stroke. I'm just giving you some ideas, right? You try it however you want. This paint's gonna take a little longer to dry. One, because it's winter, it's not as hot in my studio. But two, Terra just, it doesn't dry as quickly and it's a little bit more forgiving. Don't forget that you can also still get this wet and play around with the, maybe dabbing it and still getting more texture on there. So a lot of options. This is after two steps, and I say two steps, brushing and scraping, and that hasn't had the step yet. So I think it'd be great if we kept going. We should be able to kind of now, as we're discovering what we want to do. So you have two options, dry brush it on there and stop, or dry brush and do some scraping. Y'all tell me in the comments which one you, you like. Which where which what do you do? Keep going. I like a little bit of both so far. But if you don't put the paint down, you can't do you can't do the scraping and you're I like to mix it up a little bit. Notice also um, for the last segment section we just did. I did a two or three panels before I did any scraping. So you could let the, the paint set up a little bit if you want. That's looking cool. All right, let me just set that down. 
We're back to our scraper again at this point. Let's see where we left off. Let's just do a little bit, not too carried away. Just want to scrape some of these hot, thick areas. Instead of, you know, not the whole panel. And I'm not worried too much about the big clumps. A lot of that'll just dry. It's paint, right? The next step, we need to put the blue agave on there. And um, that'll be interesting to see how well our paints dry. So I've done weathered looks before, and it always comes down to layering. You have to have multiple textures, multiple layers. One of the things you'll see with Melissa's video is she talks a lot about texturing. She does a lot of dabbing. And she also reminds you that, you know, you, you need to let things dry. And that's kind of where we're going to be facing here in a minute. It's how well things dried. Um, okay, so a little bit of scraping, a little bit of painting. I'm just removing a lot of the thick paint. I think that's working out really well. But just again, look how great the texture is working out for us. Scraping and brushing. So we're well on our way. We're doing great. What do y'all think? All right, so let's do this. This is blue agave terra paint. So I, I'm gonna use the same idea. I'm just going to drag it on. And I'm gonna do a little thicker because I want texture. As I mentioned before, if this looks great, I'm thinking about putting it on my wall. Maybe with my Bowtie Treasures name, I don't know. But do you see how now, um, it's just a whole nother dimension. And I'm gonna bring you in close in just a second. I'm, I'm trying to lay the paint on thick. This is gonna take some time to dry, but I don't really have any steps. The only step that I possibly could do after this one is potentially a little bit of scraping. And I'm not rolling that out because this is so thick that there's gonna be high points to this paint. Now, if you're simulating worn paint, it's possible that you might need a large, so let's do it on the middle here. Let's do a large section that's, com that's more complete, maybe towards the middle and the edge. And then as you get further out, drag it. Something like that. It almost looks like maybe someone was um, trying to get all the old paint off and they just got tired of scraping and they just loved it. So in this case right now, I'm, I'm getting a lot of paint and I'm using a light hand because I, I don't want to spread all the paint out. You can, do you see I'm dabbing? That's another way to get texture. But randomly just find a place to apply paint. You can even go sideways like this or drag it, whatever. I'm using a smaller brush. I could have used the Big Daddy to do this and maybe got bigger strokes. But just keep it random and it'll feel random and you'll be okay. Remember I'm going sideways. I want some of that paint on, this, on the bevel. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Now, one thing I have been doing is that I'm trying to go in the direction of the board. So there's a, a break here. Right now you're seeing the color in, in the way, in the, in the value that'll, that it will dry. Um, it, I'm sorry, that it will get top coated. So it's gonna be a darker color than when you, if I showed this to you in 20 minutes, it's gonna look almost powdery and dry. So as much of this as you want, or as little of this, if you, if you don't want too much of the color, don't put so much on, just let it, it's your, it's your door. Now the beauty of this technique, since it's weathered, is I can always even still add another color or come back maybe with Moonbeam and, and go over it some more. It's all about, it's all about layers. You have to have the layers or it's not gonna work. So be creative, be adventurous, Try some new things out. 
don't be so predictable with the brush strokes. You know, that wasn't, so again, you can see it's starting to dry in some areas, it's getting lighter. This part right here has a little bit more raised. Bigger the brush, the bigger the stroke. And I can come back after an hour and still add more. Right now I'm adding a little bit thicker. Just don't want it to be, I want, if I were to scrape off some of this, I want some high points. So I'm definitely dragging thick, thick paint. You can do it. I could have done that with Moonbeam too. But you see, it's too pure, like, it, like there's no distress. So either scrape that, dry brush over it, or sand it. Sanding. Terra sand's really great, but keep in mind when you sand Terra, it's like sanding dirt. It's going to be a little dusty. So, um, but one option again we could do is we could do that. But I'm not really enjoying so much the scrape. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'll probably do some scraping, dry, or take a light sandpaper and sand. Just give it a little bit of a distress. But embrace the little clumps of junk that shows up because I didn't clean it. I want that part of my project. I think that's it for tonight. Oh, let's flip the door over. I almost forgot about that. Let's take a look how the other side, if you guys will see the other side. So the other side is, So the first coat, um, let me get my camera, if I can reach my camera. Okay, so remember the first coat was, um, this door was kind of whitish cream, this side was, um, but I painted it with mud puddle and burlap 50-50 mix. And then I used, uh, and I mixed sea spray in that. I did a really thorough, not heavy scrape, but I scraped most of the raised texture off. And then I did fluff. So that's, and then I scraped the fluff off. So I sea spray and paint, and then I did fluff, but all of it's been scraped. It, there's not much texture to touch. There are some places, especially in the uh, beveled areas, but uh, paneling section, but this is a different look meaning I haven't done any teal on this and I probably won't. So this was again, another experiment. And, um, but there is no Terra on this side. I think it came out looking really nice as well. Maybe too much um, evidence of scraping. So what I might do is come back with cotton because this is fluff on the, at the last color, some cotton and hit those textured areas with a dry brush of cotton. And it is gonna be this area here came out really, really looking great. Um, but yeah, sea spray really uh, is a very forgiving, fun medium to work with. And I enjoyed what it, it just took the polish and the gloss off the door from a standpoint of being smooth. And I really like that. But if you're going for weathered and worn, that's a great way to, to do that. Thanks so much for watching tonight. But until next time, see you in a couple weeks. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Be awesome. Stay creative. Until next time, we'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.